China, the Delta variant, today's Fed announcement, all cause for concerns, perhaps for investors, but there's still plenty of opportunities uh, out there. Joining us now with a few stock picks is Joanne Feeney, partner and portfolio manager at Advisors Capital Management. Joanne, we, we had an interesting discussion I had with, with uh, Leslie uh, about a uh, sort of a survey that CNBC conducted, and there is some complacency out there among investors, not always great, but and we talked about it. a lot of it has to do with the Fed. We all love the Fed. The Fed is so generous, aren't they? They're so generous with uh, with all this accommodation that the, the default trade in the market is higher. It's hard to imagine a really big break. Is that a good thing? Well, you know, Joe, I think there's certainly, you know, cause for concern about how the monetary policy is going to play out over the next year. But I think that if investors look for stocks that can do well, regardless of what inflation does and what the Fed does, then obviously that would be a fantastic solution. And so one of the things we're counseling our clients to look for and, and we're you know putting in their portfolios are some of these really resilient secular growth names. And you you know hinted at that um, just before the commercial break. In cybersecurity, for example, we know these hacks are going to continue. We know this problem is only going to get bigger. And so Palo Alto uh, is a name we've owned for quite a while for clients. And, and we think that that survives regardless of what the Fed does. Even if interest rates rise, which tends to be a problem for higher multiple stocks, we think that Palo Alto has a sort of earnings growth and the potential to surprise to the upside because of the strong demand that we think is only going to get stronger, that that's one place to hide from these concerns about inflation. That's interesting. The, the, you would have a basket of cybersecurity names? Or you, you like Palo Alto best? Or uh, you obviously have, uh, you know, there are niche players and, and subsectors of that uh, of that industry. Any, anyone else in that group? Well, you know, Joe, we like to own about 40 to 50 stocks for clients and make sure we're diversified for them across sectors. And with Palo Alto, you're getting a company which has a very large installed base of its firewall users and it's offering complementary solutions around that. So you're really targeting a very broad area of the cyber risks that are out there with Palo Alto. There are certainly other good companies, but we happen to like that one the best right now. And so that's the one we're going to stick with. We want to leave room for other sorts of tech stocks, for example, whether it's a Microsoft or a Zebra, you know, or a Broadcom. Uh, you know, there, there are so many other names uh, to put in client portfolios that we, we yeah. want to be judicious in how we spread that money around. Right. Yeah. Uh, Broadcom seems – I understand what you're saying there. And I, I, there must be a lot of uh, the innards of all these electronics that – that you might like that are going to do well no matter what, and, and, and in this case, it's chips. I just think they need to change the symbol. You know, it's just way too confusing um, at this point. <laughs> Don't you think? Right. The, the danger is I, I sometimes call them a Vago because I've just know. known them for so, for so long. You know, but yeah. the, uh, Broadcom is a good example of another strategy we, that we use for clients, right? Uh, about half of clients are worried that they're going to run out of money uh, sometime over their lifetime. You know, Broadcom is a company that pr plays a, pays a nice dividend, about 3% yield. They tend to raise it every December. And so you get that income going up over time. And it helps clients ride out the volatility in the market, knowing they have a decent stream of income from, you know, some of their companies. Also, of course, the secular drivers for Broadcom are really attractive, particularly now with the 5G cycle and their important role in iPhones and high-end Samsung phones, but also those semiconductors that they provide uh, to cloud computing. And right now, we're at the beginning of a new wave of upgrades in the speed of those data centers, and Broadcom is a key supplier there. And then you have the software business, which is providing more stability and higher margins. So we actually think Broadcom can re-rate higher in terms of its multiple on valuation, and that's another tailwind that we think is going to be helpful for, uh, for the stock. Another one of our favorites, because you're one of our favorites, Jim, but... Becky, it was Surratt. Wasn't it Surratt that talked about Thermo Fisher? I'm, I'm pretty sure he mentioned Thermo Fisher yesterday or the day before uh, when, when he was on. You like Thermo Fisher, too. Yeah, we like Thermo Fisher a lot. Again, another place to get into secular growth. I think a fair bit of inflation protection because of the, just the big drivers behind the need for better medical and analytical tools for, for medical, for pharma. But also, they, as you know, they provide uh, testing equipment, PCR tests for covid and while some folks thought that those testing numbers were going to drop precipitously, what we actually are seeing is more and more schools and businesses now instituting weekly testing, if not twice a week, at some of the universities that I've heard of. And so that's a name that it's in healthcare, so it gives you some diversification. It's relatively low volatility. 
You pair that with something like Agilent, which also, again, big demographic drivers behind pharma and healthcare, I think, are two oh, additional. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.